Today we're finally getting a chance to test my new focuser from Astro Oasis. Hey folks, my name's Steve and welcome to Scotia Astro. Well, there's been a long wait for clear skies here in the UK, as per usual, but last night I managed to run my first tests on the Rose Focuser from the folks over at Astro Oasis. In this video I'll get the Focuser fitted to my Skywatcher Spree 100, make sure everything's connected up okay, show you how I'm using it, and then I'll finish up with some real world tests under the stars. I've already published an unboxing and first impressions video in the unit, so I'll share links up here and down in the description below if you want to check that video out too. Again, for full disclosure, I was sent the Focuser by the Astro Oasis team, but they haven't had any say in what I included in my videos or asked to see it before it was published. As always, you'll get my honest opinion on it, and then you can decide whether you want to add it to your astrophotography setup. Right, let's get straight to it, and I'll start by briefly showing you how I fitted the Rose Focuser to my system. The Focuser was really simple to connect to my rig, and this was made much easier by the extensive installation manual that's provided on Astro Oasis's own website. I'll link to that in the description below if you want to have a browse through it. I've got to say this is one of the many particular areas where the product really shines. The instructions, guides and handy tips that are listed on the company's website are excellent and really easy to follow. Their customer service is top notch too. I did mention it in my last video, but I appreciate great customer service when I receive it. So again, a big thanks to Frank Chen and his team over there. They were super responsive and very friendly in their emails. So if you have any questions or issues with your Focus or any other Astro Oasis products, you'll be in good hands. The installation manual takes you through a range of fitting scenarios and has some detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to fit the Focuser to your specific scope. This includes references to many of the well-known and widely used scopes today, so you'll likely have no bother finding your specific fitting method. There's also some helpful reference videos on the company's own YouTube channel and a link to that in the description below. I won't waste too much of your time showing a minute-by-minute -minute fitting here, so I'll speed up the clips, but fitting the Rose Focuser to my Esprit 100 was fast and straightforward and I had no issues with it at all. The first stage is to remove the coarse focusing knob from your scope to make way for the rose focuser. You can then add the red clamp around the focuser housing, which eventually holds everything in place. Then you need to insert the specific gear which is included in your pack and line this up with the handy gear locator that's also provided. You can now remove the gear locator tool as it's not needed and tighten down the gear on the focuser shaft. Lastly, you add the rose focuser and tighten it down by screwing down the red clamp. The installation's super simple and it took me less than 15 minutes, so it's a really well thought out design. With the fitting out of the way, I got into the fun stuff and I started testing the focuser's function and connectivity in the daylight hours. There's two main ways to control the Rose Focuser and I had a go at both of them to see how they performed. The first option is wireless control via the focuser's inbuilt Bluetooth capabilities. If you're going down this route, you need to download the dedicated mobile app, which is available for both Android and iOS devices. Before I discuss the features of the app, I'll quickly go over powering the unit if you're using the Bluetooth method. Thanks to the new integrated USB-C port, you can either power the focuser this way or use the dedicated 12 volt DC port. The 12 volt DC port option is pretty straightforward and self-explanatory. When using the USB-C connection though, you have a couple more options for getting some juice into the focuser. Firstly, I used a small portable power supply with a USB-A connection to the power supply and the USB-C end to the focuser. This worked perfectly and I was able to power it on and connect to the app no problems. I also used the USB-A to USB-C lead that came with the focuser, as well as one of my own. Both work perfectly without any issues. The second method is connecting your USB cable direct to a mini PC or a power hub, which can give you both power and control capabilities, as well as cutting down your wires. But I'll cover this later in the video, so stay tuned for that. For differing use cases, I think the Bluetooth option would be really handy for visual sessions where you want to precisely focus your scope without touching the focus knob itself and causing any unwanted vibrations. As I'm primarily using it for astrophotography though, I'll mainly be controlling it via the dedicated software. Heading back to the app, when you open it up, you're initially prompted to sign in, but you can also use it without registering an account, so the choice is yours here. In terms of layout, the app is streamlined, easy to navigate, and everything's clearly labeled. The first page shows the devices that you can connect, and once you've paired and connected your focuser for the first time, it'll appear here on the screen. Selecting the device from here will take you onto the main page, where you can start controlling the focuser and access more functions and settings. On the main page, you have the ability to set your zero mark, move the focuser in and out by small or larger steps, and go to a specific point on the focus travel. There's also a settings page which lists things like the device name, hardware and firmware versions, and other basic info about your connection. You can also perform a factory reset or upgrade the firmware from here too. The advanced page is where you can specify the maximum position of your focuser, with the default being 80,000 steps. Each scope will be different in this regard, and it really depends on the length of your focus travel, so you'll need to play about with this and dial it into your needs. 80,000 works for my scope, so I just left it where it is. You can also specify the amount of backlash here, which can help when it comes to autofocusing routines. Here again, Astro Oasis excels as they've included a very helpful guide to measuring your focuser backlash, 
which I found essential when calibrating my Folkser with Nina. More on that later. Finally, you can set the audible alerts in regards to turning on or off the beep when the focuser moves and when it powers up. I quickly switched off the beep on move option as it gets annoying quite quickly, but I guess it could be handy if you're not right next to your scope and you need to know whether your focuser is moving or not. The Bluetooth connection worked like a charm and it's a really handy feature when first connecting and testing that your focuser is working properly. Let's move on now to direct connections and controlling the Rose focuser via dedicated and also third party software. For this test, I'm connecting my Rose Focus directly to my mini PC, which in this case is a B-Link U59, which I highly recommend for controlling your Astro sessions. I'm connecting the Focus via its USB-C port to the USB-A port in the mini PC, which provides both power and control. As I mentioned in my previous video, Astro Oasis provides a link to the ASCOM driver for the Rose Focus on their website, and the installation for that was fast and simple. For my testing, I'll be controlling my rig in the Rose Focus via Nina on my mini PC. I'll be remoting into this into the warmth of my office because it's absolutely freezing outside this week here in the UK. I'll be using Microsoft Remote Desktop to communicate between the two machines. I set up my scope in the daylight to do some testing before its first official run at night, so let me take you through all the gear that I'm using. For my initial tests on the Rose Focuser, I use my excellent Skywatcher Esprit 100 refractor sitting on my AZ EQ6 GT Pro mount, which is connected to the rock solid Ioptron tripe here. Images were taken with a ZWO 2600 MC Pro, which is a one-shot color camera. All gear apart from the mounts connected to my B-Link mini PC, so it's a pretty streamlined system. Again, I really appreciate the inclusion of the USB connection here, and it saves me lugging out another 12 volt power adapter. I'll have links to all of the gear that I mentioned in this video in the description box below, so you can go check that out if you're shopping for any new gear. By using my affiliate links, they provide a small compensation to me and no extra cost to you, and it lets me keep producing my videos and sharing my content with you all out there. So thanks to everyone who's been using them. I made sure that the focuser was engaged on the gears by turning the clutch from the off to the on position. This meshes the gears together and ensures that I can adjust the focuser remotely and automatically. Back inside for daylight testing, I connected the mini PC to set up the Rose Focuser and Nina. The focuser appeared on my list straight away, indicating that the ASCOM driver was installed correctly, so I went ahead and connected. Here you get some basic info on the focuser and a simple method for moving the focuser in and out by using the arrow keys or by defining a specific position. I chose 10,000 for starters to make sure that the focuser was moving okay and I had no issues at all here with operation. So far so good, but the real test is how it performs under the stars. I waited for nightfall to dial in my settings and take the Rose through its first of many autofocusing routines. So let's see how it did. So before I go on to show you how well the Rose performed, I wanted to go over some preliminary steps that you'll need to go through to get the focuser dialed in to perform consistently. You can tune in different settings via the ASCOM driver software or within Nina itself. It's worth stating that all scopes and focuses are different, so your settings won't be exactly the same as mine, but I'll take you through what I did. For starters, there's a great section on the Rose Focuser user manual dealing with autofocus, and some handy hints and tips to get you up and running, so I recommend you go and check that out if you're using this unit. They have some detailed instructions on using the Rose with Nina, which is my software of choice. In order to get accurate and consistent results for autofocusing, you need to properly set your backlash compensation. It's fairly straightforward when you know what you're looking for, but the user manual does a great job here taking you through the process. Backlash is a common feature of pretty much most focusers and it can really interfere with your autofocusing routines. It's basically caused by the tiny gaps between the gears of the focuser, which results in a small amount of dead space when the focuser changes direction. This slack needs to be accounted for and you can do this by measuring the backlash of your focuser and then configuring the software to account for it. There's two main options here for measuring the backlash of this focuser and both give great results. You do need to make sure that while you're taking these readings, the backlash compensation is set to zero to begin with. You can do this in the Rose's own app or in your software, which in my case is Nina. The first method involves measuring the physical movement of the find focuser knob after setting a defined number of steps. The second, which is the method I ended up using, uses the shape and date of the focus curve itself, which you can see in Nina after you perform an autofocus routine. Usually when you have backlash in your focuser and you haven't set the compensation for it, the right hand side of the curve's flat for a period of measurements which roughly translates the amount of slack between the gears. The backlash figure in this method is determined by the step size that you set in the autofocusing routine. Again, this will be different for your specific system, but the excellent user's manual gives you some handy tips on determining your ideal step size. In my case, I determined that my ideal step size was around 200, and on my first autofocus run, the flat line of the curve ran for around four points, so that gave me a backlash figure of around 800. As the manual states, this doesn't have to be exact, so to be safe I added on a bit and I used a thousand for my backlash compensation. I also used the overshoot option in Nina which gave me the best results. Within Nina I'm also using the excellent Hocus Focus plugin. If you haven't already, check out Chad's channel over at Patriot Astro. He was my Nina guru when I was setting up at first and his videos on how to configure Hocus Focus were great. 
I'll link to it in the description below. I'm not going to cover the ins and outs of Hocus Focus, but once I got the settings sorted for the Rose Focuser, it performed brilliantly, and more importantly, consistently. Let's see a live Focus run in action now, and I'll take you through the results. It's pretty cold out tonight, and it's nearly minus 6 Celsius, so I won't be lingering out here too long. I've got the scope pointed up at Capella, as it's one of the brightest stars visible from my location at the moment, so it'll make a nice test star to check out Focus. Okay, let's head back in and we'll get the rose underway. So here's Capella shining brightly in the winter skies, and it's a nice target to test out our focus. I've manually moved the focuser to a point where it's pretty much in focus, which in my case is around 48,000 steps. I'll just click on the autofocus button in Nina and we'll see what we get. I'll speed it up a little to get through things a bit faster. Okay, the autofocusing runs complete and it looks good. We've got a nice curve here and on the screen the stars look nice and sharp. Just to double check though, I'll go a bit vintage and use my trusty Batnoff mask and place it over the dew shield of my Esprit. And wow, look at that, a wonderfully clear and symmetrical diffraction pattern here, bang on the money and straight down the line. I'm really excited to see this as a perfect result. Over the course of the night I slewed to other areas in the night sky and I tested the autofocus at different intervals to check that I could get consistent results. In all cases the autofocus routine was perfect, so I'm happy to say that this unit here is a reliable and a repeatable performer. I also had the chance to test out the included temperature probe and it performed admirably, and it successfully triggered a new autofocus routine when the temperature fluctuated within a tolerance of 2 degrees which I set in Nina. There's also the inbuilt heating element which keeps your focuser humming along nicely during the cold winter nights. Again this worked as required and I had no issues at all with it. The Rose Focuser from Astro Oasis is top notch and it's certainly the best unit that I've used in my Esprit 100. First and foremost it's a reliable autofocuser that's given me perfect results every time I've used it, so it does exactly what it says in the tin. In terms of physical specs I love its small and unobtrusive form factor and it's relative lightweight. It looks really neat and tidy when it's attached to my Esprit 100. I also love its power options, especially the ability to connect via USB, which is really handy when using a mini PC or an external power hub. One less bulky power leaves always a bonus. The unique ability to switch the clutch between manual and automatic control is also really handy to have at your disposal in certain scenarios. This is especially helpful during visual sessions or when doing lunar, solar or planetary imaging. The inclusion of a dedicated app to control the focuser and set some basic control parameters is really convenient too. Finally, it's a small point, but it's one that I value highly when using a new product. The customer service and online installation guides are amongst the best I've encountered in my astrophotography journey, and I've tried a lot of gear. The online guides are comprehensive, detailed, and easy to follow, and if there's any specialized info that I needed in regards to my particular setup, Frank and his team responded quickly, and they were super friendly to deal with. So what are the downsides that I've found? Well, not too many really, and they're largely subjective and depend on your viewpoint and use case. The Rose certainly sits at the pricier end of the autofocusing scale, and it's more expensive than some of the widely available brands in the market today. Having used it though, as well as many of the popular competitive brands, I think the Rose brings a lot to the table, and its unique features are certainly worth the additional cost, in my opinion at least. The rock solid way it attaches to your scope is very reassuring, and the inbuilt anti-stalling feature gives you an extra level of comfort that your precious gear will be well protected. Despite its relatively small size, it's capable of pulling a good deal of load along the focus travel, and I'd be more confident using it with heavier gear than some of the other alternatives. Its high-end design and well-machined components help in this regard, so I see it as a means of future-proofing, and it's a unit that can grow and adapt with more complex imaging trains. While the clutch feature is great to use in the right circumstances, one potential weakness becomes apparent if you want to keep track of where your focuser is in relation to its step count. If, for instance, you focus to a point of around 48,000, as I showed you earlier in the video, and then you switch the clutch to manual and move the focus point, the software or app won't be able to keep track of where you are when you switch the clutch back to auto mode. If you're purely an imager, then this won't be a scenario you're likely to run into, but if you do a mix of manual and autofocus with your scope, or you swap out cameras on and off your rig, you might run into this issue. If you can note down where the rough focus point is, then it's relatively straightforward to go back to it, but it's something you might need to be aware of. I'm really nitpicking here though. In relation to its build quality, function, feature and performance, I think the Rose Focus from Astro Oasis is a real winner, and I'd highly recommend it. If you're looking for a powerful and reliable autofocuser with a small form factor, then this should be on your shortlist of picks. It's certainly going to take pride of place in my Esprit 100, and I won't be swapping it out anytime soon. Do you have the Rose Focuser or the previous generation from Astro Oasis? Please share your experiences in the comments below. I hope you found this video useful, and thanks for tuning in. Take care of yourselves, have a great day or night wherever you are in the world, and clear skies to you all.